Um, Frederick Buechner says that the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. But some of you might be thinking, but praise, how do I even find where my deep gladness is? Well, I will tell you this, God appointed for you to be here in Palo Alto this morning, and we're gonna dive in and discover what that is. So let me tell you what to expect during this time. My goal is not for you to hear some deep voice from heaven right now, even though God, that would be cool if he wants to show up that way, but it's just to leave you inspired to take the next right step. So we're going to be doing four things. I'm going to be sharing a few anecdotes, a few stories. I'm gonna give you a few more disclaimers of what a calling is and isn't. We're gonna be doing a partner workshop and then I'll pick a few of you to share some epiphanies. Does that sound good? I need some thumbs up. I'm also, I feel like I am meant to be at one of those churches where we are a callback church. So if you guys want to respond to me verbally, again, I give you permission. Hey, hype man, thank you, Ben. Um, all right, let's get into story time. Uh, so first, a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Praise. I really like puns, dad jokes, making people dance really uncomfortably on Saturday mornings. Um, I run a photo studio, which is called Come Plum. We work with go-getter women who are impacting the world. I believe that when people are resourced and confident that they cause their communities to flourish. And this goes really well with my own personal mission statement, which is to honor God by honoring my strengths and my weaknesses to inspire others to live inspired lives with beauty humor, and authenticity. Now I call that my elevator pitch. It is really well put together. It's really quotey, but man, it was not like that a few years ago. It was messy. Let's go back to Praise version 2013, where she is crying in her room. She has lived in San Francisco for a couple of years. She worked in the nonprofit sector and she thought, yes, this is it, I'm gonna do community work in this cool city. And I burnt out so fast. I was really sick, um, very anxious, really depressed, I couldn't sleep anymore. I wasn't digesting food well anymore. I was going through a quarter life crisis. I knew that this was not it. And in this defeated way, I had to move home for a little bit because I needed to get better. So in that space, I was able to be still and able to listen. And I asked God, God, I feel pretty close to dead. Can you remind me of a time when I did not feel like this? When was a time that I really felt alive? So in that space, I remembered, oh, you know when I get to create, and make pretty things, I feel really invigorated. And I wasn't getting that to do that with my time because of my job. So I knew I wanted to make pretty things, but I still wanted to love people well. I was like, okay, this is kind of a mini aha moment. Now what does this look like? And having worked in the nonprofit sector, I was specifically burnt out with having to raise funds all the time. And in conversation, someone told me about social enterprise, which are businesses, so for profits that do good. And I was like, okay, this is kind of an inkling. Like what if I could get a creative job at a social enterprise, this could be fun. And so I uh, worked as a photo fellow with a jewelry company called Soko in Kenya. So I lived there for three months, raised my own money to be there, and I photographed artisans making these really wonderful brass pieces of jewelry. And my plan was, okay, so I kind of failed at my first step in my career. This is my second thing. I'm gonna wow this jewelry company and they're gonna hire me and it's gonna be great. But here's the thing, they were a startup and they couldn't hire me. So I felt like a failure again, to be honest. 
And I was like, okay, God, here I am trying to show up and listen to you well, but I still feel like I'm like getting a little bit of a revelation and having to still take a few steps back. What do you want me to do? But he told me like praise, these people that you've spent the most time with are these artisans in the biggest slums in East Africa. And look at them. They are using how they are wired. They are making these jewelry pieces. And because of that, they're able to hire their family members and their neighbors, and they're bringing economic good to the people around them. Praise, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to go back to San Francisco, do what I have wired you to do, and good will come. And I debated with God quite a bit, because I'm like, oh, great, so you want me to move to the most expensive city in the world and be a full-time artist? You're funny. <laughs> but I did it, and I gave myself three months. I said, okay, let me just hustle and see what happens. So not only did I work as a photographer, I did some like acting, I did some brand ambassadoring, I did some graphic design. I was doing anything so that I could pay rent, buy some groceries, um, and I hustled for about a year. Thankfully, God continued to provide and I was able to just niche out just as a photographer. And I just kept on riding the waves and I am so glad, again, to retrospectively look back and see how God has provided, but he, has continued to show me like, this is what you need to do next, and this is what you need to do next. But 2013 me could not handle the knowledge of what 2020 me is doing right now. I think I, my brain would have exploded. But the more I look back, he gave me just enough. Um, I was listening to the podcast that was part of the pre-work today, where he says that um, our purpose is not an elevator. It, it's not immediate, it's a staircase, and all we need is the next right step. So that's a little bit of my story, but let me tell you a little bit about Henry. So Henry, um, he was writing his PhD and he was getting to his personal statement and he just couldn't do it. Um, he ended up taking a job at a tech company as a project manager and he ended up doing pretty well. He became a manager of like 15 people and he was climbing up in his career there. He was Googling one day and he stumbled upon something called user design and he fell in love with it. And the more he fell in love with it, when he showed up to his workplace where he was doing really well in his career, he said it started to get really gray and it just lost some meaning. And he was like, no, 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 what is happening? And as he listened to God's nudges, he knew he had to go back to school for this thing in user design. It just drew him to it. So he took a giant pay cut. He went back to school for three years and when he finally re-engaged in this new career, he said that it took him like five years to make half of what he was making before, but he ha couldn't have been happier. He knew he was in the right place and he knew that God provided for, ev for him every step of the way. So that's a little bit about Henry. Let me tell you about Maria. Maria, this is a more personal calling. So Maria lives here on the West Coast but her parents are on the East Coast. And as they were aging, she couldn't find resources to be able to take care of her parents from afar. And as she kept on searching and searching, nothing came up. And so she felt this nudge to put together a network. She calls it end of life doulas to really care for parents who are aging. So she still works this corporate job, but she's putting together this incredible resource so that people can end their life well. So this transitions us with these three stories to a few um, disclaimers about what a calling is and isn't. So firstly, a calling is a living and breathing and can grow with you. And it can also be revisited. Um, we're gonna do a purpose at work uh, mission statement later on. I've gone through that with Denise, it's so fun. Um, but one of the key things there is that you can revisit and you can tweak it. Again, in my elevator pitch I did to you uh, a few minutes ago, before when I first came up with that, it was super short. My purpose before was to honor God by enriching the lives of others. But as I've learned more about what God has for me, I'm able to add a few more details and context that I know really is mine. So know that it's living and breathing and can grow with you. Secondly, it's not about knowing everything, but just the next right thing. That is all you need to know right now. 
And sometimes the next right thing God might be telling you is continue. And that's it. A calling is also people slash service focused, even if it doesn't directly involve people. Another thing, it may or may not be your money making avenue. One of my passion things is ideating with people of new business ideas. And the thing is, it might not make you any money and that's fine too. So just know that. Next, it's seasonal. Um, Denise mentioned some of these narratives before, but think about Amos. He was a shepherd at one point and then he became a prophet. And also Nehemiah, he was CEO to a king and then he became a project manager for this wall rebuild. And also think about David. He's a shepherd turned king. So just what you have right now in your calling might not be the thing you do forever. Also, it is often beyond your job. Something to munch on there. And here's another disclaimer. I am a millennial through and through. I fit so many of those stereotypes. And one of the big stereotypes as millennials are we're so passion driven. We wanna wake up and drive the things that our heart wants us to do. Let me tell you with Henry and Maria who are doing those very same things, we are not in the same generation. I want to give you all permission, whatever generation that you identify with, God has wired you for a big purpose. And I want to give you permission to sit with whatever excites you today and let's listen to whatever that next right step may be for that passion. Also, again, I'm giving God the space. If he wants to talk from heaven today, may it be. But it's not necessarily that. All right, how we doing? How we feeling? I need some thumbs up. Remember, I, I want to preach when people talk back to me. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing good? Okay. Ooh, this is a fun part. So my slides are in colors, and hopefully it's still turned up well there on your handouts. But there's like a little Venn diagram here, and this is going to get us into our partner workshops. So the big question we talk with people a lot is, how should I spend my time? I'm not saying this framework is a magic formula, but it's pretty good. So the thing we're going to work on today is figuring out what the world needs, figuring out what you really are passionate and love to do, and also what you're really good at. So those three elements and finding that sweet middle spot. All right. Okay, so our first thing, what does the world need? Has anyone had a week, you know, when people say Mondays, am I right? I'm like, this week, am I right? right? It's been wild. 2020, am I right? Rough. It's been something. If anything, I think it's a good um, wake-up call for us to be aware of what the world needs right now. But the thing is, the, the things that the world's issues have popped out to me might be different from what um, comes up for the people at this table versus this table, right? So the, the big thing to ask yourself, and shout outs to Corey who brought this question up during our first intensive is, what problem do you want to solve? Something to chew on. And shout outs to our six expressions that we've been learning here. How can you be a renewer? How can you bring God's kingdom here to this earth? Also, Nehemiah is a really good example, right? When he saw the walls of Jerusalem come down, he, his heart was broken. He cried. What are things that really break your heart, that make you pause and say, this isn't right in the world? I have a list here and it's not all inclusive. It is very limited and grows day by day. But I want you to start thinking of these things and feel free to write on those handouts, circle some things, jot some things down. But are there certain causes or issues you're drawn to? Is it social justice, people development, racial justice, economic development, the environment, conservation? Is it working with professionals? Is it working within the arts or with creatives? Is it working with youth, global health, foster care, 
human trafficking, healthcare, immigration? Did any of those things pop out to you? All right, I know I said a lot. We're gonna break up into our first section of our partner workshops. So I want you to find one person um, there in your cohort to partner with, or you can even have a group of three if you'd like. And I'm going to give you all two minutes to talk through this first section of what does the world need? What are certain issues that jump out at you? So I'll give you two minutes, go ahead and partner up there, and then I'll bring us back together. All right, our next section is about you. Now, what are the things that make you, you? Another thing to chew on. So the, the first bullet point, what is your life experience? Isn't it interesting with Maria's story? It's, it's hard and so heartbreaking to think of that it was her parents' um, time in life that made her have to think about this, but that is a unique life experience, right? What are some of your unique life experiences? Also, what special circumstances are you in? The next question is the one that I asked myself during my quarter life crisis is what makes you come alive? Another phrase for that is flow. When are you in flow? So much so that you were doing that thing and time passed and you didn't even recognize it was passing. Has that ever happened to you? You looked up and the sun had already set? When was that time? So being self-aware uh, is something we will always grow in doing. Some other tools for that is the Enneagram. Any other type threes out there? I feel like this might be a great, yeah. Three wing two, represent. Um, Myers-Briggs is a great tool. Strengths finder, human design. Um, this is a free me, I'm not a dating coach. But being self-aware is one of the most attractive things. So take some of these tests. That's just some free, free dating coaching for you all. Um, one of my mentors says, know yourself so that you can lead yourself and so that you can lead others well. Again, knowing yourself is others focused too. All right. Now we're going to combine that with some of the homework that we gave you. Pardon, the pre-work we gave you. So, um, did you all send out that survey slash email to your two to three trusted people? Um, so we call this the strengths and gifts exercise. It, exercise. It's also known as your hype sheet because once you get these answers for people, you're feeling a pretty low. This is great to look back on and to see like, wow, this is what people see in me, right? So what do your trusted people see in you? What do people look to you for as a resource? Another way to think about it, and if anyone wants to talk about social media, this is actually a really good thing to think through. What are three topics that you're a person of knowledge in? If you want to do some content creation, my advice, stick to those three things that people look to you for as a person of knowledge. All right, you're gonna go back with your same partner. I know I am barely giving you enough time to noodle through this, but you're gonna partner with your same group. And I want you to beautiful mind this, right? So we've gotten a lot of questions and a lot of answers. So your, your brain might be looking like this with a lot of this. I need you to put that string together. Get that Venn diagram and try to find that middle point, right? So based on what the world needs and what specifically breaks your heart, what you are passionate about and what really makes you come alive. And then also what your skills are, whether you know what your skills are or people are really telling you these are what your skills are, try to find that sweet spot. All right, how did that feel? Do you feel like we're hungry for more or did you feel like, wow, I just solved all the world's problems right now? If the latter, great. But remember, our goal is just to inspire you to do the next right thing. I like that. It's just like knowing like, wait, this is a part of me and this is also a part of me. How can I bring those things together? 
Um, lastly there, I just share a few recommended resources. Um, that first one is called Beginner's Pluck, Build Your Life of Purpose and Impact Now. That is by a woman who also started a artisan-focused brand um, in Africa, in Uganda specifically. Um, I don't know if you've all taken any Creative Live classes, but the founder of Creative Live, Chase Jarvis, also wrote a book called Creative Calling, Establish a Daily Practice, Infuse Your World with Meaning, and Succeed in Work and Life. And then also, for those of you um, who use that Bible app, there's an author named Jordan Rayner. His email list is incredible, but also the Bible plans he has on um, Creative Callings is great on there, so I highly recommend it. Um, thank you all for Makarena ing with me. You'll see me again more up here, but I am so excited for you all to take the next right step and continue to make those connections. Thank you.